Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello, friends. Again, there is so much that we want to share with you because so much is happening in the world. You know, I did not know that Israel had so many, many terrorist cells that they had to stop over there in Israel. They have gone through so much. In fact, I'd like you to take a, a look, if you would, please, at this first headline. Netanyahu says Sinbet, and that is the Internal Security Service of Israel, foiled 70 attacks, 70 attacks in July and August. And then take a look. Sarah demands United Nations take action against Israel. Why in the world would they ever request that? Lieberman warns Syria, it will end badly if you try and invade us. Hezbollah has 10,000 fighters in Syria ready to confront Israel, the commander says. Now, we're dealing with Syria right here. So much has gone on there. We all know. We hey, read it in our hey, headlines. Add them up because there are thousands of these guys who want to kill every Jew there is. Anti-Semitism reigns in America and even Christian churches. And I say it. When you hear how these Islamites and ISIS and the Palestinians and the Taliban all hate the Jews, then you add some Christians to it. I say if you're a Christian and you hate the Jew, get out of the church and join the other movement. You'd be better off. Oh, my, oh, my. Well, let's take a look at this next headline, if you will. Netanyahu, of course, the prime minister, to discuss Hezbollah threat with Latin American leaders. He is standing up, thank the Lord. Again, Hezbollah, it, another group. Absolutely. Hamas leader threatens to pummel Israel. They say, we're going to do away with you. That's a, another group. Hamas camp trains children, can you believe it, for liberation of Palestine. And then Iran, here we are again. Wrong move by U.S. will face Iranian reaction. You know, they're, they're threatening us there. If you make a wrong move, well, you're in trouble with us. At sites of bombings, Prime Minister vows Israel will relentlessly confront Iranian terror. Again, he's standing up. Iranian Army Chief, we will turn Tel Aviv and Haifa into dust. Now, Baloney! You know, did you get what they were trying to do, the Iranian Army? They want to turn Tel Aviv and Haifa into dust, into dust. I have a good question for you, Jack, and I know he'll give us a great answer from the Bible. God loves the Jewish people. He chose the Jewish nation to be the one that his son would enter when he came to earth as Savior of the world. How wonderful that God loves the Jewish people. All right, do you think that's why, then, Jack, that the devil is trying so hard to do away with Israel when God loves the Jews so much. Do you think oh, that's why? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Satan is doing everything he can. He killed the great Saint Paul. Mm -hmm. The man who killed Christians and was converted under Damascus turnpike and gave everything he had for Christ. And he was commissioned to do what I'm supposed to do this coming day. He was to deliver the message of the appearing of Christ. And that's the second coming. They killed him. And Satan doesn't want me to preach this message. And I've been through every sickness, every illness, imaginable as you heard last week. But I will not stop. They even tried me to beat me up in front of CBS in Birmingham, Michigan. And a little store next door, two Jewish men came out and defended me and helped me to the car. I will not stop for anyone. God's called me. And I'm going to give you everything I've got till the last breath. Even though I have to walk with a cane now. Never know if I'd be able to walk without any of these things. 
been a long time. But if I have to crawl, I'll be there for you. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have my message because I'm going to get it recorded and lock it up. All these programs for May and June, you'll hear from me. Nothing's going to stop me. Listen, God loves the Jew. Right. Deuteronomy 7, verse 70. The Lord did that, set his love upon you because you were more in number than any other people because you were the fewest. But because he loved you, Israel. Psalm 126, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love you. Hey, you're going to be blessed if you love the Jew. The Bible says in 1 John 4.14 that the Jew is responsible for you getting the message. What? Yeah. Well, how's that? Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Moved? Yes. Taught. Directed. And he told them what to say, but used their personalities to do it. Holy men of God, and all of them were Jews, were the chosen people to write the entire Old Testament. Wait, but wait a minute. They also wrote every book of the New Testament for these Jews were converted, became the apostles. And this is great. There's only one Gentile that had anything to do with the New Testament. His name is Luke, and he wrote that book and Acts. 66 books and 64 were written by Jews and you don't want anything to do with the Jews? Oh, you like the King James Version. Well, that was written by Jews too. Every version there is was. You better love the people of God. Amen. Well, you know what, Jack? I, one thing that I really feel that Satan's in control right now. That's why they've had 70 attacks that they had to stop right there right. in Israel. Satan's in control, and Satan hates Israel, and he hates them because God does love them. Well, you know what? The United States has done something for the first time in history. You have to take a look at this next headline. In first, U.S. establishes permanent military base where? In Israel. How wonderful that we are standing with Israel. Next commentation will end decisively in Israel's favor. Of course, uh, that's uh, Mr. Lieberman who's speaking there. This exercise is a reminder to anyone planning to harm the security of the civilians of Israel that the next confrontation, if it breaks out, will decisively end in the favor of the state of Israel. Amen. And I believe that because God loves Israel and he's going to defend them. And even though that's where the Battle of Armageddon is going to be fought, God's going to protect them. And he's going to come and stop it. Right, Jack? Amen. Uh, Armageddon is Revelation 16, 16. You heard me say it very often. I, 60 years ago, preached a sermon, the coming war with Russia, according to the Bible. I preached every single Sunday night for the closing service. And all those 800 churches, 2 million came to Christ. Then I preached my citywide crusades. 10 million attendants, and another 2 million came to Christ. And then I've been preaching it on my telecast for 40 years. Another 3 million. That's 7 million. And I'm going to tell it and keep telling it to the whole world. And this is what I said, and I'm going to do something. I still have the original copy, Crown 5 Records. It's the sound only. But wow, it's powerful. And the two Omen brothers, Chuck and George Omen, were the guys who ran the company. We sold millions of copies. Now, if you want this, I'm going to give you the bargain of a lifetime. This was originally $24.95. But if you send $10, you're going to get it. You'll say, I can't believe that guy. He is what the Bible says. A prophet. Years ago. 
50, 60 years ago. He preached this and has been right on. The other day when I saw the Wall Street Journal, and it named four nations and said, this will soon be these four nations in a battle called World War Three, and the atoms will be flying. And you know what the four they were? Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. Mm. I could give you all the Bible names right now. Ezekiel 38, 39. It's here. And when it says chief prince there, the word chief in Hebrew is Rash, which is Russia, English Russia. And even Germany, Gomer is there. And right now, Merkel is just one. Do you know why? She's allowed one million Muslims to come in. And they hate the Jew. And that's where Adolf Schickel, Gruber, Hitler reigned and said, I want to kill every Jew. And six million of them are murdered. And my dad's brother, Franz von Ippi, loved the Jews. And they took him to a German camp with the Jews. And they called the Roman Catholic priest, for that was the background of our family, originally. And they gave him the last rites, and then his head was cut off. But this happened to all the millions of Jews. I'd hate to be those Jews. And I'd hate to be those who kill them because they're now in the bottom of hell. In hell, he lifted his eyes, being in torments. And see if Abraham had far up and said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue from to money in this flame. That's where hatred sends you. Now, Israel's not going to lose. For Tarshish and their lines, the English-speaking people of the world, the European Union, and all those groupings are mentioned. And I've got that written and recorded in this Bible. The entire interpretation of the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. Every word. And the victory is coming. All Israel shall be saved. But boy, watch out for the rest. Hell is going to be terrible. And all the nations are going to be put down as the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit begin their purge of all the anti-Semites of the world. Oh man, this is something that's out. You know, Jack, all of this that we're talking about today points to something that uh, we can look forward to, and that's the return of the Lord. But if the Lord were to come back today, he said, if I go away, I will come again. We all pray the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth, as it is in heaven. We want his will. He's coming back. If he comes today, are you ready? You know, we all, we all do wrong. And that's why Jesus came. He came to die for you. He came to die for me. Oh, thank you, Lord. I open my heart to him. Have you ever opened your heart to the Lord and asked him to forgive you? I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you're watching this program right now. If you've done something terrible, the blood of Christ will cleanse you. Will you pray this prayer? I will. That Jack will be praying in a moment and ask Jesus to come into your heart and be your Savior. That's why we're here today. Is so that you can be ready for the coming of the Lord. Jack. But let me first give you a warning. That's going to be my sermon to all the world in May. Warning. The coming of Christ is right at the door. Right. No man can know the day nor the hour, but he knows when it's near, even at the door. And I've got signs galore, but none of them are meaningful until your generation. And two things happen. And God's word says when these two things happen, and they happen now, in our day, 
Right. The generation that lifts to see them shall not pass from the earth. For Jesus is coming in Boise, coming in glory. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again. What's he been preparing? The holy city. 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles long, and 1,500 miles high. They say you could put all the people of the board just on the first floor. You got 1,400 floors to go. Now that holy city, as it begins to come down, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, has the name on it. The New Jerusalem. Oh, boy, does he love the Jew. Prepare to meet that God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and prepared. Lord Jesus, I believe your coming is right at the door. It's imminent. It could happen at any moment. And I've heard some of this for years. And today I believe. I believe. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you for your love. Coming to a Jewish virgin to be born by the work of the Holy Spirit. For me, for all Gentiles, for all people of all religions, for all cultists, for all atheists, for anybody. Whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Do it right now. Father, I ask you to come into my heart. Save me. I want to be with you. I pray this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Please let me know if you prayed that prayer. Just write me a little note, will you? Please, I'll send you uh, a great little book of First Steps in a New Direction. And I want to also say, don't forget to be ordering the Jack Benimpy Prophecy Bible. You know, if somebody has a good birthday, best gift ever. Somebody has a wedding coming up, best gift ever. Or Christmas, best gift ever. So let us hear from you. I want to leave you with this thought. The best reason for doing right today is tomorrow. God bless you. Look forward to being with you again. Bye-bye.